The Redevelopment Agency Board meeting for today, August 9th, to order. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we will start with citizen comments. We have any? None, sir. No citizen comments. Okay. Moving along to the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to Move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Passes 5-0. Uh, report from all CRA districts. Sorry. So, um, in the in last year's budget, there was a uh, line item for in community policing uh, for a case manager. Um, through the year, there's been some discussion about hiring a, a, a case manager um, to assist. Um, with the homeless kind of reach out and help with guidance um, with the BPT. Um, BPT is here right now to kind of give a presentation on how we've... Uh, I don't know that they knew they were giving a presentation. <laughs> they didn't know they were giving a presentation? They, they okay. have some comments to make. But, so, uh, yeah, they can... Well, I have up here for you, if uh, we have the talking points, you have the talking points as well, and the proposed budget for the CRA manager position. So. I'll bring it up over here. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. Oh, no problem. Good afternoon. It's uh, Joe Wiesman, I'm Assistant uh, Chief of Police. So is there talking uh, points in a second? No. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, as uh, he kind of alluded to, this is a reference to a case manager. We've also used the term as outreach, homeless outreach. <laughs> but uh, in either case, I think it kind of goes back to uh, we kind of touched on this morning at the, the council meeting is all the issues that we're having with the homeless. This, this is just another tool for us to assist those who actually want assistance. And as you can see here, the, the person uh, being a civilian uh, that can help us with the case manager actually is more trained in how to navigate uh, the different systems, you know, how to get in housing. If uh, the person we're in contact with, should it be a veteran? They know the, the routes to get through system veterans, even if it touches on some of the, uh, as we know, addiction issues or be it uh, some other mental health issues, depending on if the person has Medicare, Medicaid, whatever insurance, this case manager is well versed in how to have them navigate the system to get them the treatment as well as housing and any other resources that are available. Uh, uh, years ago, uh, the department I was with previously, we had a similar uh, case manager that actually rode with the officers and was a great help, not only in navigating those systems and helping us to get a lot of the homeless into uh, housing, they were also uh, had the experience and clearance where they could access records as far as even medical stuff. So we know who your case manager is, we know what doctor you're seeing, you know those kind of things that obviously law enforcement would not you know, have access to due to HIPAA and, and other things. So, so that's part of the reason why we even looked into getting a civilian case manager because it's kind of a component that law enforcement in and of itself can't touch and uh, have the experience to really navigate some of these systems and do the best we can for them. Because uh, I think we would all agree is, is right now this is one of our biggest issues and this would be a great help to us. So. On the uh, talking points that were sent out as well as the uh, proposed uh, agreement, uh, I think some of that is uh, still to take some other steps as far as just here for uh, the one piece of it as well as on to the council for uh, the next piece. But along the lines from the CRA, do you have any questions or concerns in that regard? Uh, one question, if you would. Uh, is this, uh, and I'm asking Sergeant Pylon. Uh, is the EMS portion, is that part of their community paramedic program or is it a separate 
program from that. Yeah, I believe it's the, the same that we currently have uh, at least one that rides with us every couple of weeks, but we have to wait for them because they're the county wide. Yeah. And so um, we could take one out every day and fill their schedule with meeting with people. We get them constantly on the weekends. People come up to me when I work off duty in the library needing resources and we have to wait um, uh, to try to schedule a time in the next week or two or three sometimes because they're just so busy. Yeah, I'll, I'll just speak to my knowledge of it. That's a program that was started a few years back and it's been extremely successful countywide. So the fact that they would want to partner with us here in the city would be, uh, I think, a great benefit. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. My question is, I mean, we had discussed this at length previously the, this past year, um, but at no point in time was it brought forward that is, is this going to be a county employee? Is this going to be a city employee? Can CRA fund county employees? I, I don't know. From my understanding, and uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that's why the CRA is only funding partial uh, coverage of this because the person would be expected to cover the city, the entire city, but yet uh, the part the CRA would cover would cover, they are covering CRA. So they would mainly be responding to stuff throughout the entire city, but obviously part of that being the CRA areas. But are they a city employee? Are they no, a they county are a employee? County employee that we are contracting with. So we would contract. When we looked into the option of a city employee, uh, <clears throat> it was going to be a lot more difficult as far as a, a vehicle, getting a vehicle, all this stuff, where the county already has a program and the people are already certified. We wouldn't have to send them to upkeep your certifications and uh, your required trainings. And let's say this person, or I don't even want to say person, whoever's doing this job, if they're on vacation, the county would be responsible for giving us somebody else to fill in in their absence. So it ain't like if they work for the city and all of a sudden now they go on FMLA without a person. The county would ensure that we always have somebody in this spot because they have a obviously a, a group of people that can fill this position. But Mr. Rudisill, has anybody checked with you on this? I mean, is this an acceptable use of CRA money if we're paying for a county employee? I think that depends on what the contract looks like. I mean, we do contract with other vendors to perform work within the CRA. So, you know, assuming that there's enough um, meat in the contract to ensure that, that that's what we're going to be getting, I don't know that it, it would necessarily be an issue that it's that it's a county employee, um, but we just need to see what that contract looks like. Well, I guess, you know, the uh, please understand, I am not opposed to this. I was actually kind of irritated when I found out that nothing had been done since we'd had the original discussion on it because I as the problem was is that I believe previous members were going to take it to the city and they chose not to do that. Um, so now we're playing catch up with this. And I, I'm absolutely for this. I just want to make sure that we're doing it the appropriate way, the correct way, that we're not going to get smacked around for doing it. Um, and I, I want to make sure, again, if, if the city is going to pick up half of the bill and we're going to pick up the other half of the bill, how is the reporting going to be done so that it shows that they've spent 50% of their time in, in the CRA areas versus the rest of the city? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of details here. We're going, to, we're going to have to have it worked out. And we plan on obviously having them record the locations in and the way a lot of this will work is a lot of follow-up. So let's say an officer contacts somebody in a park at 2 a.m. or something like that. When the person comes on duty at, let's say, 8 a.m., they will have that information that we contact, and they will go out and follow up with these people because, you know, I think we all know this issue is 24 hours. Well, and it, and it certainly is no respecter of this is the line that demarcates the city from the rest of the county. I mean, I, I understand you're going to have somebody that perhaps the initial contact was made in the city, but by the time you find out where they really are, the homeless camp is out on 64 or, or what have you. I, I understand that. I just want to make sure that this is done appropriately, as, as I'm sure you are. You want to make right. sure it's done right. Yeah, and 
and some of it I think is going to be a learning curve, but we're definitely going to document where we were at the time, uh, a lot of resources, and as this originally came up, it is geared towards the CRA. It's just we did not want to limit ourselves if we don't have to, to say, yeah, you can't go over here where we just got a report of an encampment because it's outside the CRA. So that's why we, we kind of came up with seeing if, if we were able to contract and split that so that it could basically serve the entire city as well as the CRA. So I'm sure as, as we get into the contract, if there's suggestions or anything that, that need to be put in there to add more teeth to it for the CRA purposes, I mean, we, we'd be all for it. And uh, they the county's been great to work with, and they're like, yeah, whatever you need, let us know. So uh, like I say, it just seemed to be the best fit we did look at hiring somebody for the city uh, but there were a lot of additional hoops as opposed to this is almost like a plug and play it's what they do every day anyways and so uh, we kind of went this route but again if you see things in the contract or other recommendations you know we're all for it yes ma'am yeah i i think my question would be whose authority who will have authority over that person to tell them where you want them when you want them and not like you said, you're waiting for someone to come. And so I just, I, I would want to definitely know that authority. And uh, I also want to know, <coughs> do you think that's enough, half of a person? I mean. I think it's a good start. And, and I think, again, it, it, there may be some learning curves in here to where, you know, we, we always want to have the ability to say, you know what, maybe we do need to hire a city employee or something or, or something different. But I think right now, this is a good starting point for us to see, you know, how, how much of a, a lift is that for one person, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to, you know, looking into maybe somebody who's actually on staff for the city. So we'll have a contract. How long will that contract be for a year? Uh, I, is it originally a year? Or I don't even know if it specifies, <clears throat> but we did... Uh, I thought we'd, we'd send the attached to uh, all of you for, for the basically filling in the blanks to see if there were any of our suggestions, but I'm sure we can adapt that to as long as we, we would need it, you know, and it's usually, I think, a year at a time. Mm -hmm. And it has a clause in there. I think as long as we give 30 days notice, <laughs> if we did feel this wasn't working, we'd be able to uh, obviously move out of that. <clears throat> so as I understand it, basically, instead of this person being countywide, their zone, for lack of a better word, would be the city. Right. With a subzone being the CRA, which I think all the CRAs, which I think we can all agree is where the majority of homeless could be reached at any given point in the day. Correct. Yeah. That would be, I, that would be populating, <laughs> that would be passing through, most likely they're passing through one of the That's CRAs. A big statement. <laughs> I, uh, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> that, that the oh, we've got we've got them out in Ward One. Trust me. <laughs> I understand, but I'm saying the majority would be within our CRAs. I think that's correct, and and it kind of goes back to who they would report to. They report mm -hmm. to the CRA supervisor, so Sergeant Plant, Lieutenant Seymour, and then would actually control that because they would be the ones that if an officer is in contact with somebody in the middle of the night, like we mentioned. They would get the email sent to them saying hey just so you know and then when that person comes on duty they would go out and follow up and make contact with that so the the whole thing was built around cra and that's our going to be our main focus but should we get complaints or somebody call in about an encampment somewhere outside this cra we want to have the ability to use that person and those resources to address that area as well I, I would think it would be more than you think. Uh, I, I mean, just the whole Manatee Avenue corridor and all those shopping centers and, and you know, the, the causeway. Um, and all, I mean, all of Manatee Avenue and none of that's in the CRA. Even, I don't even know if that 15th Street that we got the I think that's email about, is it in, a, in the CRA? So I think there's going to be, it is. I think there's going to be more than just CRA. Yeah, we've experienced and that's the reason that we opened it up and that's that's some of the part that we said hey you know because we got one community officer that serves the entire rest of the city mm -hmm. and we have three cras and so that officer is, is running around uh there, there was a large encampment at one point out uh, out east um um by the blue heron area the, the, the area that they're trying to develop and we had to go out there and there was a, there was a large encampment out there and but a lot of them like uh, uh, uh Mr. Kramer was saying that um, a lot of them do come in for services, and even if they start out in those encampments, 
the they're going to end up in these resources at least to begin with a well, turning point is going to be a huge resource for them because a lot of things go through there they got to bring them there to get them signed up for things and then go elsewhere so they're going to event, eventually end up in the CRA at some level even if they're just passing through to get the services okay. so. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mignon and to <clears throat> Mrs. Barnaby's point this is in the budget it's just it's a different budget amount correct yeah so in the this fiscal year of 22 23 it was in the but it was part of the community policing budget and it was um budgeted for seventy thousand dollars or it was budgeted in the cra for thirty five thousand dollars but it was this i think they came to us at seventy thousand dollars and it would be split 50 50 city and cra um this this is it's increased in value uh, I mean, increased in funding um, um, ask, <laughs> basically, just due to the um, professionalism of the employee and things like that. So uh, it has, it's over, it's what, 104,258 is what they're proposing that that, um, that person would cost and with some equipment and things like that. So we're looking at a impact of fifty thousand dollars, where the city would pay the balance of that. Now that's not approved by the city, the council that I know of. Um, but as far as the CRA, the CRA is budgeting that fifty thousand dollars for uh, fiscal year twenty three twenty four. But we still have that thirty five thousand dollars in the community uh, policing budget for this fiscal year. So if it were to start. In this fiscal year, we have the budget for it. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think we need to have a, a motion on this, and I'll go ahead and, and throw one out, um, that we approved the proposal brought forward for the case manager with the understanding that the city attorney um, see the contract and that the contract follows all of the rules and guidelines that CRAs have to do in order to have the money come from us. I second that motion. Yeah. <laughs> right. Motion by Mrs. Barnaby, second by Mrs. Moore. Uh, any discussion? And I'll start. Mr. Mignon, uh, what is the status of any contract? Uh, I am not I don't know, and I'll defer to um, Chief here in regards to where we are on the contract. I have not seen it yet, so um, I don't know where they're at. I know they're, f you know, figuring out some more details uh, before providing it. Right, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, obviously Mr. Driscoll reviewed the contract. Obviously, uh, we'd be open to you know everybody obviously looking at it before we agree to anything, but. Just so you know, some of the increases in the, the price from what we talked about last year was, you know, we, we're this person is not employee, so we're not covering health care. We're not uh, supplying a vehicle like like we'd originally thought we were going to have to do. So in having that stuff built in through the county, that accounted for some of the increases in the price for that. So, but the contract is there's a rough draft uh, available. Again, in, uh, you know, we're more than welcome to get input and stuff in that. So. Yeah, I'd ask you to direct that to Mr. Russo. Okay, we'll do. Okay. I think you have a motion on the. Yep, we, we do. Yeah. I, I'm looking around. For, I'm not the <laughs> only have one a motion. These things. So I, I'd like to. Second. So I, if there's any further discussion. I'd just like to see us get this moved along. I think it's in light of everything we've been discussing. Uh, we need to get going. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Could we ask Sergeant Pollock to stay for just a moment and come on back? Because the thing is, is if if um, I'm looking at, at uh, the other rest of the agenda, is there any anything that you would like to share with us that your team has come across or um, you know, just give, I, I, I know how hard you all are working we heard today in our council meeting um, that you and, and your officers are very much appreciated because of the hard work that you're doing. So I, I'm giving you an opportunity to toot your horn if you want to, but just to kind of 
bring us up to speed again. Yeah, um, just a real quick update. Um, so uh, I know that some of you uh, have received uh, word about 15th Street. Uh, we actually last, was it last sat last Wednesday, five in the morning we showed up. Um, uh, we did get preempted by an ambulance um, um, delivery. So we did have some more people that were, were, were camping but weren't technically in violation of the ordinance at the time that we showed up because an ambulance had come through there. But we educated every person and took partnered with city works or public works to move out over a truckload of, of, uh, of debris, trash. Um, and, 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 and I know that 15th Street was, was really, really a mess. And so we, we hit that hard. Uh, and not only did the CRA officers show up, but we actually had four or five uh, night patrol officers who were about to go off duty, decided they wanted to come down and join in with us. And we uh, field interviewed every person that we encountered uh, we educated them about the two laws or the two ordinances, which is the blocking the sidewalks and um, also the camping, the unlawful lodging ordinances. We also gave them resources. Uh, we actually so we had one person um, take us up on the offer to go to uh, the Salvation Army. One of the hotbeds was utilized that night. Um, another one has been utilized as well um, for a female that, uh, that was taken by Officer McNeil this morning. Um, so those are great resources. We like, like everybody has said, and everybody feels we want to offer resources to those that want it, but those that are going to continue to commit criminal activity and become nuisance on their neighbors, we want to enforce the law as well, equally across the board. And so we were, we had a very successful morning. Um, then we came back. I, I uh, fortunately sit on the board of Keep Manatee Beautiful. And I got to direct our cleanup crew to 15th Street Saturday morning. So we went back there again. And uh, one, it was a marked difference, but it was still a lot of stuff. And we were able to take an additional two trailer loads of trash um, off the street. And I have pictures if anybody wants them on that day. Well, we got pictures <clears throat> today. <laughs> New pictures? Oh, uh, I guess. Yeah, it, it posted, it said, Presumably. an hour ago. but. I don't know when it was taken. That's what we discussed before the meeting. Oh, I apologize. I wasn't here for that. Um, I, I, I can drive down there and take a look. <coughs> I know that Officer Poulos is, is down there every morning uh, issuing uh, NTAs for those in violation. So he's he has written several NTAs already. That's um, a notice to appear, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> Notice to appears, which is basically an arrest. They have to court date. They have to go and see a judge because of it. Um, for blocking the... Um, the sidewalk so for that ordinance you have to warn them you have to tell them to move if they return within 72 hours then you can enforce that um, and and again we're giving every option to do something different than have to face consequences of violating an ordinance but unfortunately we have found that several continue to to violate uh, um, trash is an issue down there um, and i know that i have a meeting tomorrow uh, with uh, some people with the, the Salvation Army as well to try to, I think, believe that that's going to be a step in the process of hopefully getting some buy-in from some of the neighbors, including Salvation Army, to help us with that cleanup so that we don't have so much trash out there. Um, I, you know, and that's one big component of it. Um, I know that um, Officer McNeil has been tirelessly uh, writing the same thing, notice to appears um, for the um, uh, violations of panhandling in the in the median at high risk roadways, um, I, I think it was a couple weeks ago, a, a uh, homeless individual that was out in the county uh, was on a median when he was struck by a high um, in, on a high risk roadway by a speeding vehicle, and then thrown through the the windshield of a bus and killed. Uh, and so we utilized that opportunity to really um, uh, put it on a social media. And then my officers are, are enforcing that as often as they can because we don't we we don't want one any person to get injured on a on a major roadway. I have worked as the traffic supervisor and I've been to the, the pedestrian versus vehicle THIs and it is heart wrenching to see an individual be struck by a vehicle and their family members or even their friends come and and wish they had done something, wish they hadn't been on the roadway. And so if, we, if, if it takes writing a notice to appear to convince them to stay off of that, uh, we will do that. Obviously, we, we put out social media 
if you are contributing to this by giving them money, you're putting them at risk as well. And that's why we did the social media thing. Uh, Officer Tells just um, last night, the reason he wasn't at the CCRA meeting, and I was, was because uh, he was over at Rogers Garding doing a back to school thing. He brought uh, one of our specialty vehicles over there and some other stuff and was having some fun with the kids. And as we get ready, and they're, they're all going to be at the schools within their own CRAs tomorrow, uh, welcoming the kids back. And so it's going to be an exciting day for them. So obviously, all the other things that we're doing, you know, um, just a couple days ago, maybe last week, we had one homeless individual who was actually. Uh, was sitting on the front steps or the front um, bench um, of the city causing a little issue um, but we were able to connect him with a homeless um, outreach person from the county and they immediately housed him the next day and that just shows the power of if we are able to get this person quickly how quickly we can get them off the street and into a home if they're willing so just one win story thank you absolutely okay uh, we're going to move uh, item, what was it, 5B till later, the discussion on budget. Um, so we'll go to Central CRA District, item 6A, on-street parking and sidewalk project for 6th Street Court East. Yeah, and we have Kim Clay back here from Public Works. We had alluded to this, I think, last time Kim was here a little bit, gave a little sneak peek on the 6th Street Court East Um on street parking project. We've had a lot of issues with people parking on the grass there across from Lincoln Village, and we feel that this would uh, be a benefit to that area. So she's gonna Saw this last night? give us uh, the uh, more technical details of this. Thank you. <coughs> Great. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for listening again. Oh. <laughs> I'm Kim Clayback, City of Bradenton Public Works and Utilities Infrastructure Engineer. And Public Works has been working with the CRA on a multitude of projects actually this year. And we are moving forward. Before I start on this 6th Street Court East on street parking, to let all of you know, the 14th Street CRA sidewalk project that we had come back and asked for additional money on is going to be starting by the end of this month. So they'll be mobilized and on site digging up the ground, putting in new sidewalks. So we're really excited about getting that started. But what I'm bringing before you today is the 6th Street Court East on street parking. And this is across the street from Lincoln Village. It's on the east side of 6th Street Court between 9th Avenue and 11th Avenue. And if you go out there and look, the whole 50 feet behind the curb on that east side is called Waters of the US. It used to be Robinson Ditch. <laughs> and they filled the ditch in back in 1974. They piped it and filled the ditch. <coughs> and with that, Nobody ever formally transferred all of the land to the city as right-of-way. The first 20 feet of it behind the curb is right-of-way, which is, a, I found that out this morning because um, I had had David, our surveyor, doing some research on it. And then Mr. Rudisill and I need to have some more conversations about it. But <laughs> we have this space that belongs to the city, 20 feet that we can use. There's another 30 feet behind it that is waters of the US that is actually kind of pretty green grass with trees in it right now. So we want to utilize some of this space for 6th Street Court East. The plan in front of you has 27 parking spaces associated with it. They're angled parking, so you would come from the south, um, from 11th Avenue, and come north to, to utilize the parking spaces. They're all meant to be public spaces, and they're not dedicated to Lincoln Village, but if, if you've ever driven down 6th Street Court East at any point during the day, people park on both sides of the road, and there's not enough room for emergency vehicles or any other vehicle, really, to pass that street safely. So this is part of, of trying to alleviate the parking issues they have because they don't have enough room for visitor parking behind their buildings. and. It's also meant for the residents there. It's meant for the church if they want to use it because there's a church at the south end at 11th 
Um, so there's, there's a multitude of people that we're going to allow to use all of this space. Um, last night in our discussion at the CCRA meeting, bless you, um, the, uh, one of the questions I had asked was, do you all want to see handicapped parking in these spaces? And there was a resounding yes that we want to put some handicapped spots as part of this parking space. Again, it's going to be 27 angled parking spaces to alleviate that traffic. The, we're gonna add some lighting as part of the project. There's some street lighting that we're including to brighten up and provide a little more visibility as well as safety at some of the intersections. And we're, um, <clears throat> we're hoping to add the sidewalk and that's where Mr. Rudisil comes in because we have to decide can we add the sidewalk at this point or do we need to get with the EPA to decide if they're, how they're gonna let us <laughs> use that space. That's because the parking spots are within the first 20 feet. The sidewalk behind it is, is past that 20 feet line that is the, um, that is the right of way line, if you will. Um, so it's been that way since 1974. I can call it a prescriptive easement, but I know that we've maintained that pipe and that space for all these years. So it's been, what, 50 years? EPA hasn't been down to look at the property at all in the <laughs> last 50 years, by the way. So we'll talk about that offline, but the, this is for the strictly the parking spaces. And then um, once we decide on what's happening with that space behind the right-of-way line, whether we can use it or not for sidewalk, it would include the sidewalk. Um, so did I leave anything out? Did I skip anything? Because, you know, in my head, the whole story's there. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, I just a quick one. Did you say it was 27 parking spaces? 27 parking spaces. Okay. Um, we've had great success with on-street parking in different locations across the city, and I think this is one that would really benefit from just an aesthetic um, to keep, and, and as well as safety. <coughs> and it's primarily for safety, but I think all the haphazard cars that are parking on the empty lots that are at the north end and um, along that whole area. Uh, so we are here today to ask for your consideration for funding for the project. And we have the, the cost estimate at about $150,000 right now. Um, if you approve it, it is something that we will put into the contractor's schedule to build this fall. So there's no permitting required and we are good to go. Is, is there anything that, because uh, I saw in one of those pictures it looked like a disabled vehicle, is there anything that precludes someone from parking in a public space a car that's, say, not working? A city ordinance. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, well, um, I can, on public streets, so. and I can say that last night I attended the Central CRA and they voted in favor of this and mm -hmm. they liked it. They liked it. No, I, I can share that motion. Basically, the motion was that uh, Board Member Thompson made a motion to advise the CRA Board that the CCRA Advisory Board approves of the 6th Street Court East on Street um, parking project and would like to see it moved forward. Uh, Board Member Bird seconded that motion and it passed 5-0. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? All right. Do we need a motion? Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the 6th Street Court East angled on street parking option as presented. Move to approve. There's a motion. I'll second. And a second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Passes 4-0. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Now you can go back to work. We're Thank no, you. I have I have part of the next one actually oh, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I um, we we are going to be presenting additional on street parking to you at the next meeting as well. Oh, I believe. Where? Um, Give us a little sneak peek. Uh, 14th Street CRA. Oh, okay. All right. Stay in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> 
any of you, you know, give Chris a Coke or something, he might. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, see. Um. All right, next on the agenda is a community uh, public art pilot program proposed. We have Jean G and Kim (laughs) presenting this one. Mostly you guys don't think engineers do <laughs> you get to use the other side of your brain. Uh, so, you both. Um, I remember my first art experience. I was three years old. We lived in Buffalo at the time. And with all the snow in winter, my mother used to take us to the art museum because it was free. And, um, and it got us out of the house when there was nothing else to do. <laughs> we had three stations back then. So, uh, but we used to walk into the Buffalo Museum of Art into this room that had nothing but crucifixes in it. <laughs> and for a three-year-old, I got to tell you, it was scary. <laughs> but other than that room, I loved that place. The weird room and all the big pictures, and it was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, but that's just an aside to my childhood. It was great. <laughs> um, but on the co- if, if you have the presentation, and you can see it here, there's a, there's a quote, where are you going and what do you wish? The old moon asked the three, or the five of you in this case. So this is, we're looking for direction. We're looking for your buy-in, for your input into how you want to see art through the CRAs mm-hmm. and possibly in the rest of the city. So we are, we are here to give you possibilities and we're going to come back to you with specific locations and some budget numbers on how to implement some of these things as, uh, as we move through some of the CRA projects in particular and how we can incorporate these elements. But there's a quiz here. So does anyone know where that, uh, where that quote came from? And, and <laughs> Mrs. Coper is not allowed to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I answered it last night. Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess um, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. No. Uh, what's Lincoln the other one that I love? You got it. A Wrinkle in Time? No. Wink, uh, wink and Blink and a Nod. Oh, okay. I was totally off. <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason I served on the Library Board of Trustees for 14 years. <laughs> so Jean G is going to present all the options that we've been looking at. You can and, st- oh, I can stay, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a fun team. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying it anyway. So uh, some of the ideas that we thought about was because of all the infrastructure that's happening, um, why not just follow them along? Because one of the things Kim also told me about was that when they do the asphalt, um, that's the best time to do um, the asphalt art because it's fresh and it's ready to be mm-hmm. sealed, I guess. So, so we came up with these three to start looking at with you guys as ideas. Like we're not asking for an approval today, we just want to well, kind of like a nod, you know, to, to look at these and see which ones you think might be ready to move forward. Um, you know, we have the asphalt art, and then we have sidewalk stamping and the um, signal box wraps. So um, the Public Art Advisory Board actually mentioned all three of these at the June meeting, too. So that was kind of neat. As I'm looking back, I'm like, yeah, this is great because they kind of just make sense for you know for us to get some art out there while we're waiting on the big piece of um of sculpture to come in from mineral springs park <laughs> so. all right well it's funny that um sergeant pilot was talking about you know all the safety and things that are you know very very important mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that the bloomberg study talked about that asphalt art can actually help with safety. Um, They did a study that for two years they had 17 different um, cities that they they watched and what they found out was um, there was a 17 percent decrease in total crashes and a decrease in um, injuries in those crashes and a 37 percent fewer crashes that resulted in in injuries and 50 percent fewer crashes that involved pedestrians and cyclists so so there's, you know, there's some hope with, with some of this um, asphalt art that we can be thinking about. And, you know, another thing is it's, it's meant to pre- 
to actually promote a more walkable city and you know we've always talked about wanting that connection to the different parts of the city it encourages drivers to slow down and be more alert of pedestrians and cyclists and um, it's funny but the discovery of the asphalt art safety benefits actually complement the notion that it can also build community so um, this is where I ask you, Kim, <laughs> some of the projects we're talking about for that. Some of the projects we're talking about in Village of the Arts. So I threw out to Jim one day, I said, you know, I'm just going to put this out there and I know you're going to laugh at me, but I think we should do orange crosswalks with white polka dots in Village of the Arts. I, it would be fun. <laughs> and he just rolled his eyes at me and said a few choice words and said, OK, if you want to look at it, go ahead with the CRA. I said, OK. So we, we're looking to do something different to, for, for that community as, as an arts community to do something different, maybe do their logo in the, in the uh, crosswalks or, or something like that. But in the other CRAs as well, where we've called out the Wears Creek area um, as this, this historic area in central Bradenton to start defining the other CRAs by using things like crosswalks or the wraps or different things. And we can incorporate these into um, the, the projects that we're doing. We have the 14th Street CRA project, sidewalk project. We have the Bradenton CRA project. The, the design is almost at 100%. So we'll be taking that out in September to have a contractor start with that. And as well as the, the on-street parking elements that we talked about today and, and that we'll talk about at the next meeting in the 14th Street CRA. But there are possibilities all over the city, not just in the CRAs, but to, to give people a piece of art and become, they feel like they see the art, they walk up and touch it, and they, they look at it and they feel like they're part of it sometimes. Um, some people are going to, you know, draw graffiti on it because that's what they like to do. But um, studies show not as much. <laughs> but it's 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 bringing the community together because people will talk and go, "Oh, did you see that new thing over that they put on the on this?" They won't call it a signal box. That ugly green cabinet that was there. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're trying to get out there to the community. It's not going to do a hundred. It's not going to buy into 100% of the community, but there are those that are gonna to start to feel more of a community awareness because of the improvements and, and because of the art that they see, whether they like it or not. <laughs> I have a quick question. Is it a good time to ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, uh, I will keep this slide because there's a second question. Um, do, for the streets, do we have any, like, do we need approvals or anything? Like State Road 64 comes to mind as an area. I would love for you to do it right there in front of, like, um, basically from, it's the end of the CRA, then going towards downtown, kind of where um, Central Cafe, Oscura, Verona's, that area there. We could do something on either side of State Road 64. You can't DOT, mess with it. Um, we can ask. They'll allow us to do wraps on the signal boxes. Okay. But they won't allow anything on the streets itself okay um, that we can ask them but because the traffic level is so high there um, it, they'd be hard-pressed to approve something on 64 itself but on either side uh, we did that um, on 12th Street as you come down from downtown um, mm -hmm. in front of the garage down to uh, Village of the Arts and 9th Street and beyond uh, before we did the 9th the ninth improvements there was uh, a cascading I called them flowers they're a circular design mm -hmm. that came down the street and just connected all of that together um, we could do something like that absolutely um, what about the crosswalks on State Road 64 <coughs> like the one that's basically ninth and 64 in that area we can ask them to do something different um, they've approved we have a, a standardized stamp that we use and a standardized color we can ask them to do different colors and even different patterns in there. Um, it's it's going to be up to them, um, and it's, part of it is the, the construction and the maintenance of it because they'll want a maintenance agreement to go along with that. Okay, great. And then I was just going to make a comment about this one that has the curb cut done. It's pretty funny, but um, it would be great to put something like that you know the Which new one? Uh, the one that it looks like a guy's smoking cigarette. <laughs> I know that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, uh, but um, in that on that little Raleigh, curb that juts out now that we've done it, basically right in front of Turner's. Mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the pork shop, it's called the pork shop. Um, is it's called a pork shop? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we should paint it to be a pork shop because I almost ran right over it the first time. You know, like once the improvements were done, because it wasn't jutting out like that before. I don't think. No, I, I ran over one. <laughs> did you? I know. I was like, wait, what? How did? Where did this come from? <laughs> now they just had oh okay it maybe it was the beginning yes like make it look like a guy choking on a cigarette because or a pork chop or we could do something donut like there oh perfect <laughs> um, but there are those possibilities that we can we can look at individual locations especially where they're just our streets um and and do fun things within the cra's and it's a unique thing that you'll see when you go to this that particular cra um and that's that's the, the fun of the public art is that you, you know, and God forbid, and sometime in the future, you use a, a geolocation and it, uh, where you, you send somebody on a scavenger hunt to find them all, oh, you know? Yeah, um, so there's, there's all those different things that we can do once things are, are built and ready to go and incorporate mm -hmm. it. Great. We did ask last night at the CCRA meeting to, you know, their opinions on these and um, board member Bird had mentioned something about the 15th Street roundabout and mm -hmm. there's half of it that could be done and half that yep. can't be. But, you know, we're trying to identify places in all the CRAs. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Um, I applaud you all. I, I think that this is a long time coming. I would like to see it done. I'd like to see every signal box in the city of Brighton covered with something other than some of them that has graffiti on it right now. Um, I know that there was a crosswalk that was done over by Westminster, the manor on about 21st Avenue. Mm -hmm. And it was done in such a way that it's, it appears almost three, like three dimensional where people think it's a speed hump and they slow down before they get to it. And I think on 13th Avenue, if you all remember correctly, we had requests from the Village of the Arts to maybe put some of those along 13th to try to slow some people down on 13th Ave. So I, I would bring that up. Um, one of the things that's been very interesting, having a, a son that lives in Austin, Texas, and Austin did go about putting in a lot of murals and public art and things. And for years and years, nothing happened to them. Now it seems that there's almost like a guerrilla movement that if the mural appears to have been culturally appropriated by a non or a member of that's not a member of whatever culture it reflects on, those are the ones that get damaged. So I just say that as, as something to, to think about when, when we start looking at things. And one thing with murals like that, with graffiti art, there are some that it, if we took a spot, call it the skate park, and every three months, they can paint whatever they want on it, and three months later, we clean it, and then they start all over again. But it gives them a place to go where it doesn't have to go mm -hmm. out in the rest of the city. That's probably not the best place to do it, quite frankly, but it <laughs> just, right. you know, there's a problem there with it. But if you give them a spot to do it, and it represents their art, that and there's there's going to be places where that would be appropriate to do something like that mm -hmm. but that's even a possibility as we go forward it's just that without any program any direction that's there's there's a lot of different things that we can do and we we're looking like i said for direction i'll let Gigi finish <laughs> I, I just wanted to piggyback on your comment about the letting them do it um i think uh, if anyone has been to Gainesville, which I know I'm not in the <laughs> I've, I've mayor is gone, so I have no one. Um, but um, that you know that wall on 34th. I don't know if, if anyone has been to Gainesville. There's a wall, and you just it's called the wall, and it's on 34th Street, and P, it, it's a thing that people do to go and paint a section of it. And um, in particular, there's one that no one touches, and it it is a community thing. You have to know the community to know the one that no one ever paints over um, so i think it's neat i think it's a great idea as far as community building well, and as far as the the poetry stamping and things like that throughout ward two near 26th street uh, nancy matthews mm. was a, a very proud resident of the city of bradenton 
And whenever we did any kind of sidewalk repair there, she would go out and ask if she could add some of her decor. So if you walk up and down 26th Street and look at the sidewalks, you will find where she added some of her ceramic doodads. Eyeballs, <laughs> fish. I loved them. Hey, I don't think kids, she asked. I kids, loved them. No, no. My kids learned to count because she had a gate that had seven fishes on it. So my kids learned to count to seven because we'd walk by it every time when they were in their strollers and we'd count to seven. Um, she did ask. She worked with Mr. Cumming uh, in Public Works, who was the director back then. And it was as long as <coughs> the major concern was a, a, a slip hazard. So that's why some of the things are very, very tiny. They're not mm -hmm. very big, but they are precious. Also, that's, another, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, that's ownership, and that's, that's what we're looking for. Well, she was one of the, the first artists in the city of Bradenton that the city of, of Sarasota contracted with to do one of the fountains down there. It was quite a coup. Oh, yeah. She's quite an artist. She lives in Ward 1 now. Just so you know. <laughs> Um, but one of the things, competitive, competitive <laughs> <now>. <laughs> oh, I'll get in trouble. Um, no, one of the things that I will say about just letting have a wall to paint, I, that concerns me a little bit. I think public art, our public art needs to be, you know, controlled and, and run through our public art board. I, 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 I like what you're saying, but I think for when we're spending taxpayer dollars, we need to be a little bit more controlling and, and making sure that nothing's offensive and all that. And so that's the only thing I would be a little bit worried about with that. Um, but I love all this, all of it. Um, it's just going to be money. <laughs> right. I, my understanding, though, is it's not a whole lot as far as expense goes. I believe that this is something that we could do inexpensively. But I'll let you guys speak to that. But just one other geeky um, idea um, is at my kid's pediatrician's office, each room is painted in a theme, but they have, the artist hid um, a heart with wings in each room and hours spent in that office with my kids <laughs> finding the heart in each room. So maybe we could hide like our logo or something like that. that or something fun. that um, actually, um, I think it was actually Sergeant Pilot last night was talking about um, how the different neighborhoods in the CCRA have, like the Dove community, you know, the Dove could be an emblem that mm -hmm. floats around the neighborhood somehow. You know, just yeah, all kinds of ideas out there. So let's go back now to the sidewalk poetry stamping. So um, this is something that caught my eye. And um, what I like about it is it's, an, it's the opportunity to actually engage the community, you know, find the poets in our, our amongst us and um, the Manatee um, Library already does it with teenagers. I'd like to see us do a contest for all ages of poets and these poets can um, then be chosen and I think we should have poets actually helping choose them but um, then then they're stamped into whatever projects we have going on and in a big city like St. Pete or not St. Pete well they are a big city but I mean um, St. Paul Minnesota they follow along the public works people um, and whenever they have to redo a sidewalk that's when their opportunity is to stamp one of these so we could have a contest and have poets or poems for years <laughs> you know you just never know but um, but I think there's a great opportunity you know in that um, thing too and I was able to talk with um, with St. Paul Minnesota about their program and I actually found somebody in Sarasota that I think can actually make these stamps for us. So that's pretty exciting because I wasn't sure how that was done. And that was by talking to the guy that um, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you about from the signal wraps too. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah. That's true. So we that's have true. another another guessing game for you all. Mm -hmm. You have that's brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you'll know what you know and you are the guy who decide who'll decide where to go. Oh, the so. places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, we're looking. I know all of you. Know, <laughs> 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 
Blind fish, tail uh, fish, red fish, blue fish, uh, gold fish, yeah. yellow fish. Yes. Uh, All right, let's move on to signal cabinet art rafts. And um, so how this kind of started was um, somebody from this, the, the uh, what do you call it, area, Manatee County, Bradenton Area Convention Visitors Bureau, actually called me, and said, hey, Aaron from the Manatee County, Manatee County um, who works with um, these boxes <coughs> has been interested in years to get these boxes, you know, done something too. And so the woman that was there at the time talked to Art Center Manatee too, who said, you know, they would love to have that and help, you know, get their local artists involved in this sort of thing. But I think what's really cool about these is they don't have to be muralists. Anyone who can design something, you know, creatively, um, and can make a digital image of it can have a wrap so it just opens up you know the opportunity you know for our artists to, to actually show their work but um, I found a, a person in, or a company in Sarasota that can actually do these wraps so I'll be able to get some pricing now you tell them about the signal wraps <laughs> if you don't mind <laughs> so most of the signal boxes that are here in the city are owned by are owned by T dot but maintained by city staff so with that we have to get a permit to put it on a dot owned box dot has been very amenable in other locations about putting the wraps on so long as they don't interfere with the functionality of it they're fine with it um, the city only owns we only have we only own four street lights if y'all didn't know that so four so um one in freedom village or by over by freedom village the one at ninth and ninth the one at 13th and ninth street and the one at 17th and ninth street those are our whopping four street lights that we own yeah um so uh, with all of those signal cabinets we can do those not without a permit or it would be you know me doing a permit for me so I can avoid that paperwork hassle and just move forward with allowing it but we'll um, we need and we'll do a test we'll do a pilot project to make sure that everything's um, good and functional and with our maintenance staff as well as as the art itself and you guys will have the opportunity to uh, to take a look at it as well before we would roll anything out, but we we would be able to permit through DOT the rest of the signal cabinets, like all the ones on Manatee Avenue and Sixth Avenue, and then mm. um, um, 301, even if we wanted to go down that road, um, 14th Street. Um, so there's there's a lot of possibilities, and um, even outside the CRAs, the city would handle that. The CRA would handle the ones in the CRA. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Ward why, one's going to get public was. art. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. Oh my <laughs> I love it. I have a quick question. If um, yes, ma'am. As to, about funding, is that I, I think that Mr. Mignon and I touched touched on it a tiny bit. But now that I've actually seen the pictures, um, is this something? And maybe it's a Scott or Mr. Rudisil question. Um, is this something that would be appropriate for us to partner with a nonprofit because it has a hard deliverable because it is a wrap it is a stamp that we actually have to buy to make this happen I'm just thinking like extra grant money or some other way that we can deflect the costs well when I talked with um, Aaron at, in the Manti County um, we talked about different ways to make this work and, and funding and those sort of things and um, you know, we just were brainstorming, which I'll do right now with you guys, because, um, you know, the one thing I could think of was um, the Manatee Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, if we found a way, maybe Art Center Manatee, I don't know who would, you know, but we would all have to partner mm -hmm. together. But I was thinking that Manatee Community Foundation could be the place that holds funding that if people want to, you know, contribute to it that sort of thing so that there is still some kind of ongoing so I guess I'm asking from you guys that you know how you feel about it you know us just starting some and getting the ball rolling and figuring out the process and figuring out you know how to make this work and then from there I think it could grow legs and we could mm -hmm. continue I think that's a great idea Sounds neat. more discussion the chair will entertain a motion to approve public works and the CRA public art coordinator to move forward with detailed plans to implement public art in asphalt, sidewalks, and signal boxes. I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Motion second. Any further discussion? All right. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, there you go. Thank you all. Yep. Thank you. Well, that was fun. Fun. I know. And now it's more fun. More fun. <laughs> the budget. <laughs> Funnest part of things. <laughs> that was not a gavel. That was me hitting that. <laughs> all right, Mr. Munion. Okay, so where I want to kind of go with this, this is a preliminary... I think you guys got all a copy of the preliminary budget for this next uh, fiscal year. So this is very early on. We don't know exactly where the numbers are going to. This it's it's a good estimate or a guesstimate, if you'd say, on where we're going to be for the next fiscal year. But there is going to be some adjustments um, as we look at other projects, um, costs, things like that, and what the revenue is actually gonna be. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a look at it, and we will be going, as you know, with, you know, we work with finance and Lance and, and his team with the budget, so we'll have plenty of opportunity to dive in a little bit deeper as we go, as you know, and you know, most of you have been through this before. So this is just a preliminary thing, and I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to kind of look at it, and if you had any questions in, in the interim, then we can make adjustments as we go. Um, I know it's a little bit difficult because we don't know the exact numbers, but this is kind of a ballpark, and you know we can make adjustments within that budget if you have other um, you know, projects you would like to see or other projects you would like to fund or anything like that. So there's some wiggle room in here. A big thing is always we have, um, usually have a big number and like acquisitions and things like that. So we can adjust that number depending on how much we have carryover from this fiscal year to next fiscal year um, and where the budget lies. So. There, we have some leeway in some of these line items, but there are some things that are, you know, kind of cemented in. Um, I also wanted to let you know that within um, the, as we kind of go down, I don't know if you have any questions, but I kind of point out a couple things, is that the wages and salaries are a component of five positions within the CRA. And those positions would be the director position, an assistant director position, the CRA manager position, the um, public art coordinator, and also the uh, uh, program administrator. So that's a combination of the five. Um, so that's why the number is what it is. So it's uh, five salaries there. Um, is there a reason why it's more in the Braden CRA than the other? Um, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I, I, when I put them in, um, these are numbers that I'm working with finance with, mm -hmm. so I'll have to ask them. I'm not sure on that question, but I'll get that. Uh, I'll ask that question. But these are. I sent them some numbers and then they sent me back through Munis some numbers and I kind of plugged them in here and that's something I'll ask about. It used to be an estimate about the, basically how much time was being right. spent and that's their must be estimating that they spend, right. but I don't know if that's still the case. I mean, well, I mean, that's, that can be adjusted to where it, we can do three. It may be to where the director a little more is because the just depending on like you're saying the work that's done if it's done more in one i know um last year um my predecessor had budgeted um my salary into more of the bradenton cra because the um the thought was that um that we were going to bring on another cr ma cra manager and that CRA manager was kind of going to hold on to the do more work in the 14th and the central CRA where I would do more in the downtown area district. But still, all we would all kind of work together. Um, so that could be a component of it. I'll just have to look into it to see exactly how that's put together on the on the break and part of things. Um, May I ask a question? Sure. Um, the 
property that we purchased over in the Village of the Arts, mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm just, again, quickly looking at it, mm -hmm. do we have uh, money set aside to, to A, keep that place mowed, and B, the possibility of doing something in the short term to secure it and light it? So what we... <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <coughs> what? What did I do? You gonna put chain link on there? <laughs> I'm not asking for chain link. I, I'm I, going to. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. So, so uh, to answer, <laughs> just want you to know. So oh. to to answer your question, basically, uh, we didn't have anything in last year's budget mm -hmm. for maintenance primarily um, because at times public works would mow the property or they would do that but you know having um, you know staffing if I, if I can't get Lewis Park mode y'all aren't getting that part so, by, so by you, public works so you know so. so but we've had the opportunity the budget it's in the plan my man right <laughs> we will but now this this fiscal year I have budgeted for property maintenance in every CRA okay so if we own property in each CRA we will have property maintenance in that and then we will have um, budgeted for improvements to that property in the 14th Street district so if we do entertain you know what the next steps for that project for that property is we will have the money budgeted a certain amount of money budgeted for that okay and then um, I kind of want to talk about um, the the Love Park and MLK Park improvements so we're looking at increasing the Love Park um, funding uh, and I talked with the CCRA last night and Jane was there um, and basically we, I floated kind of an idea of having more of a sports and fitness kind of park and I, you know they weren't they felt that the park should be more of a typical park with playground equipment and swings and things like that so um, so we're gonna look into that what happens is that the playground equipment nowadays and installation of equipment is at a high level of cost so mm -hmm. we have to look at uh, you know what's going to be able to fit there within a certain amount of budget you know they want um, they're looking at maybe multiple playground equipment you know one for a tot lot one for um, you know uh, uh, older age kids as well um, so we're we're going kind of back to the uh, design portion of things to see what we can do as equipment wise and you know what the areas will be and things like that so we'll take that back but they're they're open to increasing that budget and would I, you know, I recommend that to create a park atmosphere that would as they say if you build it they will come so at this time it's been a difficult park and there's not a lot of kids that play in the park just because of the nature of things and so the feeling is if you know we get that playground equipment in the kids will start coming in their parents will and then that'll help facilitate cleaning up that park a little and making it more a community friendly park so I, I, can, I, can, I, yeah. can I say something Okay. Yes, the the activities that occur in Love Park is a deterrent to some parents bringing their children there. However, and I'm not sure if anyone on that board lives in that area. You can put all the play young kids stuff there as much as you want and spend all the money but it's just gonna sit there because they really don't know what's but that but whatever they do decide that's fine but it's not just the crime and that element keeping people away it's also they just don't really that's I kind of picked up from them first off they wanted you to reach out to the to the church that's next to it 
they felt like they might have ideas and I kind of picked up that they they weren't sure who would be using the park so I um, I, I I think based upon what they said and even afterwards in talking to them it seemed like um, talking to the church um, on how to engage there because it sounded like is there a church right next to it? Mm-hmm. There's a mm-hmm. church right next to it, but there's things have changed in terms of the, the that neighborhood. Pretty much back in the days, those churches, uh, their congregation were made up of the people that lived nearby. I think if you took a poll or, or a survey, a lot of the people who attend that church, as well as mine, don't live in the area. Okay. I'm just saying. But... The advisory board is our advisory board. We have to take into consideration their thoughts, but we have to also remember not a one of them lives in that area. So they're they're assuming check with the church because they don't. Okay. So who would use? I mean, who uses it? Just right the now? right now, just the homeless and. And people with bad intentions? Yeah. No. Maybe. There, there are people who are there, adults, <laughs> all day and all night if they could. Um, in terms of little children using it, I think my neighbor across the street, <laughs> <laughs> I think my neighbor across the street takes her little ones down there. Uh, so, uh, I've been to the park, even after hours, and had to run some people out of there, and they weren't homeless. They were actually neighborhood people. Yeah. They're, 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 they, they, they hang out. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's a bad card type thing. A, um, did they do community. anything wrong? They weren't, they were doing something wrong by the no, mere no, fact of being in the park when it's closed. Oh. And we just, I just asked them to leave for the night. So, there was no, there was no criminal element at the t- at that time. Now, there has been in the past. But uh, Officer Towns has worked really hard at uh, that park in particular, and and um, and then we also have the security guard that goes there every night. And what if it, on the reports we're seeing that he may ask one person to leave or something like that. Um, but if it's the same people that I encountered, it was just community people that were just you know sitting and chatting and talking, and they were more than willing to leave and didn't have any issue with it. But it was like their backyard. I live on a street and there's a street perpendicular to the house. So I get to see who's riding their bikes down there and turning into the park. Um, There is an element of other activity still during the day. Um, Again, there aren't very many, there aren't very many parents there that are going to take their little ones there. So I'm just saying if that park could be more of a, family, you, you know, oriented, not so much, you know, putting a hundred thousand dollars in play equipment for children three, three to eight or what, you know, whatever age would. Are you thinking that it would be better if it had, um, I mean, do, we don't have Did like grills and picnic tables in our parks anymore, do we? We just took those out there. Yeah. yeah they sit on oh. Did they bring their own chairs? Mm-mm. I'm just. Want, I mean, I it. it I'll let the advisory board. No, I I have to say I I think they're kind of on the same with you. It came about because he was recommending that the the playground equipment that's there is got some hidden areas and a place where people can hide and so then it was if we take that out what do we put back oh, it, it still should have an element of that you know the not a hundred thousand dollars worth no <laughs> well it's, it's, well, it's, it's that kind of utilized and something with shade i mean it's, right. it's got to be because it's agree. it's in the middle of a hot sun yeah. well it's it's we have it within the budget, and then within that budget, we'll look at what we can do at that park. And, you know, I'll take a couple of different um, designs of things and 
you know, I'll take that to them to see if if they like it or not like it, or if they want to adjust some things and things like that. And once we have that kind of idea within the budget, or maybe a little above the budget, we'll see where where it lies. Then we can bring it back to the CRA board if we need to do a budget adjustment after that. But let's just, you know, it's in the budget now. We'll I'll continue to work with them to get a um, you know a design that they they approve of, and then we'll bring it and have to adjust, if we have to adjust it here, we'll adjust it, right. and we'll go from there. Definitely don't need like a large area of the little playground. More like a pavilion where people could go something and like that have might a work. birthday party or something. I don't know, or I don't know. Something like that might work. Miss, um, and not move to after we shut down the ones on the river walk. Miss, um, for future, so it's hard to, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, where, where, where are we on our agenda? I think we've gone a little far afoot. <laughs> are we talking about, about the budget. desires we wish to see considered for the budget or right now we're talking about specific line items on the right. budget, one of which was yeah. the budgeting for the park. So while we have the engineer, I thought I saw. I just wanted to remind you all there was a visioning that was done at the park at both Love Park and MLK mm -hmm. and I I know some of the results at Love Park were were specific to small children activities like mm -hmm. the the hills that they wanted to roll out and the astroturf that we're doing at some of the other parks so there were some small children requests as yeah. part of that visioning uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure, I, I'm guessing you still have all of that information? Mm -hmm. It was because it was CRA, so. Right, what we kind of looked at was the, the top three things were playground equipment swings and landscaping. Um, you know, the survey is a small percentage mm -hmm. of the community there, so I think it, you know, um, it was just different ideas right. looking at how we would invest in those parks and how much we would want to invest in those parks at at this time and if we wanted to you know maybe do some stuff and then do the next year a phase two depending on how how the park is you know if the community is using the park and things like that so it's a pro i think it's a progression of things and um i think maybe the first step is to kind of try to find the design for at least a phase one and see how that rolls and if the community is using the equipment and things like that because you don't want to invest a lot of money and it just sit there right. and you know that could be that could be an issue so i think maybe the best thing is to kind of phase it in and see kind of what happens with it you know and not do a grandiose thing but you know do something there that will will um, engage uh, children and parents. Ms. Coachman, would a community garden work there? I was thinking about that last night. I mean, I, I am just not sure. Let's table that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, <laughs> let's, let's move on. Um, is there any other things, any other questions you have or anything that you would like to see in the budget that's not there. Again, this is, I'm just kind of getting the ball rolling on this. Uh, we're gonna have more discussions, but I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of what we put together. Um, again, there will be some adjustments on some things, uh, but I just kind of wanted to get your feedback on what you would like to see or if you had any questions on what's on here now. Um, I'm sure once I look at this, I'm going to come up with some other things sure. that I'd like to speak with you about. Sure. I, right now, after the day that we've had. <laughs> right. Um, business okay. flare, you have that split evenly amongst all three. Is that just for the... the yeah, because we have, we have there is the nine, MLK right. is all three. Yeah. So we have uh, money for, for all three. Okay. I think we'll be able to speak better to budgeting priorities too after we have had our visioning that we're doing. Are we doing visioning? Uh, <laughs> Am I confusing I it with the city? Or the budget. Uh, I don't know that we'll have that done before. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just, I'm, 
I just think it's hard to know right now what mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. really want to focus on. All right. Any other discussion of the budget? No, I just, I think I had mentioned it before about the community policing. So the community policing budget, it's broken down a little more. Um, it's basically uh, six officers in all, you know, in the three districts. Um, two, right now we have one officer in each district and the supervisor, Sergeant Plant, um, which we pay for. We have an, uh, the additional three. Um, and then we also have the case manager that would be in the budget. Also, I have budgeted in next year for three cars uh, to be, and their outfitting. That is basically contingent on them being able to bring in another community policing officer. So once they're able to bring in another community policing officer, we'll have that, we'll have a car um, available for that person. So those are what's in the community policing budget. I will, on the in the next, meeting of time i'll have that we're kind of getting some additional little details me and uh, chief have talked about about it and um i'll bring that forward once it's a little more tightened up as well as these budgets as well and they'll uh, we'll provide you with more of a line um, more granular as well and the uh, city will is uh providing you with the big book of the budget as well so you'll you have plenty of time and to look at those and you know use them to try to fall asleep with i guess <laughs> so anyway and that's it for me all right any other new business or discussion i'll make a motion to adjourn <laughs> I don't know, you need to make a motion, but we're adjourned. <laughs>